Hey guys, my name is Scobie and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to install RetroArch on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So I will mention a couple things before I get too far into today's video. We're not going to be able to install RetroArch directly onto our Xbox. We are going to have to first enable dev mode on our Xbox. It's really easy to do. However, it is not free. It costs around $20. I'll be walking through the whole process in today's video, but this is an important thing to keep in mind. I'm going to be showing you step by step first how to do this process. And then later in the video, I'll be showing you step by step how to install RetroArch using this process that we set up earlier. So the first thing you need to do for today's video is of course have your Xbox turned on. Right now we're going to be starting from our dashboard and what we're going to be doing is clicking Y or search on our controller in this keyboard pop up that pops up. We're going to be typing in dev kits and we're going to be scrolling up here and I'm going to be clicking on the green one right here that has the two pictures of the Xboxes on top of it. I'm going to be clicking get simply clicking A on our controller. It's then going to say congratulations we got it and then this is going to start installing right away. From this point I'm going to be clicking A to view the progress and we can see it's starting to download. It's around 100 megabytes in size so it should only take a couple seconds to download. Once it's downloaded what I'm going to be doing is coming back to my dashboard. I'm going to be coming down to my apps and games. I'm going to be coming down the left. I'm going to be coming to the app section and I'm going to be selecting the dev mode app that we just downloaded. I'm going to be opening this up and here we're going to go down a process of actually creating a dev mode inside our console, which is going to allow us to install custom content and apps. So we're going to be able to install RetroArch inside our Xbox. At this point, I will also mention that when we actually put our Xbox in dev mode, it will not overwrite or delete anything from our system. So you don't have to worry about anything like that. However, you are going to need to have at least five gigabytes in the storage space. So I'd recommend to have at least 20 to 50 gigabytes for us to comfortably install RetroArch and have a little bit of wiggle room here while setting up our Xbox in dev mode. What we're going to have to do is once we get to this screen, we're going to have to click next twice until we get to the activate console section where we will then get a code and a link on screen. So what we're going to have to do from this point is come over to any desktop PC. And what we're going to be doing is entering in this URL that we see right here on screen. And most likely when you first come in here, you will be asked to log into your Microsoft or Outlook account. In this case, I've already logged in here. What we're going to be doing is scrolling down here until we see the developer programs right here. And we're going to be clicking on Windows and Xbox. And we're going to be clicking the get started button right here. Once this opens up, we'll be brought to the sign up page for this. And what we're going to have to do is come here to this page, come over to the right, and we're going to be clicking on the sign up link right here. Once this opens up, you are going to have to set up all your account information. Now they do ask for a couple different things here. First is your location. Then you have to choose an account type, either an individual or a company. In this case, I am an individual, so it's going to cost me around 14 euro. Or if you're a company, it's going to cost around 75 euro. This will vary depending on your location and your currency. However, it is really easy to set up here. And then all you need to do is enter all of your contact and information below. I'm not going to be putting this on screen. I'm actually going to be skipping to when my account is created, but it shouldn't take too long. It's really easy to set up all this. Once all your information is entered, we're going to have to accept the terms and conditions, and then we're going to be able to click finish. And then we're going to be reading directed to the registration confirmation page. From here, we can go back to our dashboard where we can get some more information about our account. But from this point, we're actually not going to be staying here. And we're going to be going back to the link that is found on our Xbox. Again, I'll be leaving this link in the description down below. Now, from this point here, we'll be brought to the manage Xbox One console screen. And here below this, we should see a list of all currently added Xbox consoles. So once we get to this screen, what we're going to be doing is clicking on the plus button on the right. We're going to be clicking the enter activation code button. And then this pop up will appear. Now, what we're going to need to do from this point is come back to our Xbox and we're going to be grabbing the activation code that showed up here before. Now if you've left your Xbox idle for a while you might get this button to get a new code. All we need to do is connect up our controller again, click A to get a new code and we're going to be taking this code and we're going to be entering it into our web browser so that it matches up correctly. Once your code is entered we're going to click submit and then our code and information will be entered into the web browser. Now if we come back to look at our Xbox we can also see now instantly it's going to start activating and we're going to start activating this Xbox as a developer account Xbox. Now from this point if we come back to our Xbox we'll see this screen right now to switch to developer mode. What we'll have is two options, switch and restart, which is going to automatically restart it as a developer account. We're going to be simply clicking switch and restart. And then this can take a bit of time while our Xbox switches and restarts into developer mode. So once your console has fully reset, you'll be brought to the dev mode UI like you see I have on screen right now. The next issue I had was for some reason I couldn't connect to Xbox Live. I think that's because I'm using a wireless connection. If you're having a wired connection, I don't think this will be an issue. So to fix this, what we need to do is come to our settings here on the left, come down here to launch settings. We're going to be coming to network settings and then we're going to be setting up a wireless network. So basically the dev mode version of the Xbox account is going to act like a brand new Xbox. So we basically need to set up our wireless connection again. Once your wireless network is back up, if we come to our homepage, we should see the Xbox Live is now up and running. And that is an important step. We're going to need to have that up and running before we do anything else. 
So now that our dev mode is fully up and running, the next thing we're going to be doing is remotely accessing this from our computer and we're going to be transferring the necessary files to install RetroArch on our Xbox. So this is going to require us to change a couple more settings here on our Xbox. So what we're going to be doing is coming to our homepage. We're going to be clicking right twice and we're going to be coming down here to the remote access option and we're going to be clicking on the remote access settings. Once this opens up, the first thing you need to do is make sure enable Xbox device portal is enabled and just under here you will see two URLs. Either one of these you should be able to browse to in your browser and we're going to be using those a little bit later on. What we're going to be doing is coming down here a little bit further to authentication and we're going to be setting up a username and password. Now this is something I would recommend doing just to make sure your Xbox is fully secure so no random people can come into your URLs and just randomly drop files in your Xbox, making sure the Xbox device portal is enabled and then setting up a username and password underneath the authentication section. Now once this is done and you try to come to this web page it might mention to you that this web page is not secure. In this case we don't have to worry about this we're going to be clicking on the advanced settings and we're going to be continuing anyway so we can actually access this web page. If you've set a password on the previous step you won't be asked for the password in this small pop-up. Simply enter the username and password and then you'll be brought to this dashboard screen where we're going to be able to transfer files and different information from our PC to our Xbox. So once you have all these steps done we're finally ready to download the Xbox version of RetroArch. So what you need to do is come to this RetroArch link. Links is always in the description down below. We're going to be coming to the download tab and we're going to be scrolling down here on the download tab section and we're going to be looking for the Xbox One option option here. Now underneath this there's going to be two things to download. There's going to be the Microsoft Visual C++ and there's going to be the download option. We're actually going to be downloading both of these files as we're going to be needing both of them for our Xbox One. So what you need to do is let both of these download. Together they're around 400 megabytes or so. So you might have to be a little bit patient here while both of these download. So once all your RetroArch files are downloaded we're going to be coming back to the Xbox portal that we came to before. We're going to be coming to the My Games and Apps on the home section right here and we're going to be clicking on an add button to add the new files. Once this opens up we should see deployer install application. What we're going to be doing is clicking add files. We're going to be locating to where we downloaded our RetroArch files and for the first file to be selected we're going to be selecting the RetroArch app itself. So this is going to be the big file. We're going to be clicking OK. Then in this pop-up we're going to be clicking next and then we're going to have to select any necessary dependency files. Again we're going to be browsing and this time we're going to be selecting the C++ file, the other application file that we downloaded to and this is going to be all the necessary dependencies for RetroArch. Once you have both of these files selected we're simply going to be clicking start in this little pop-up and then our files are going to start to be sent from our PC to our Xbox and you will not see any information or upload or any progress like that on your Xbox screen so you just need to be patient here while this transfers across and again this can take a couple minutes. So once this transfer and install process is fully done if we come back to the home page of our Xbox we should see under games and apps RetroArch will actually show up here automatically. The first thing we need to do is come down here we need to select it using the select button or the two box button on our Xbox controller. We're going to be coming to properties and we're going to be changing the application type from application application to game. So this is an important step to make sure we can fully utilize this app with all of the graphics horsepower inside the Xbox. From this point we're going to be coming back to the home screen right now to restart our Xbox to make sure everything is saved and all of our settings are correctly implemented. After some time the Xbox should reboot and you should be brought back to the dev mode screen. What we're going to be doing is coming to the home page right here. We're going to be coming under quick actions and we're going to be launching the home which is going to bring us to the Xbox One UI. It's a little bit nicer to look at than the dev mode right here and it'll be more familiar than what we're used to. From this point we're going to be coming down here to the my apps and game section and don't be concerned if none of your normal games show up here as mentioned they won't show up in the dev mode i'll be showing you how to change that later but you will notice retroarch comes up here under the game section and what we're going to be doing is simply clicking a to launch our retroarch app now if this is your first time being in the home menu since installing dev mode you will need to sign into your xbox account again to launch retroarch but that should only take a couple of seconds and once you've signed in you'll be able to launch it without any problems and then retroarch will start to load up so once RetroArch fully opens up and you're able to move your controller around, you may notice that it looks a little bit weird. And if you've used RetroArch before, we're actually missing a lot of menus here. So what we're going to be doing is coming down to Online Updater and we're going to be updating a couple things. The first thing we're going to be doing is coming here to Update Assets. Simply click A on your controller and your assets will start to download. And then extracting and installing the assets might take a little bit of time. So you may have to be patient here. And once the assets install, you'll notice all your fonts and a lot of the UI will change and it'll look much better. Now, once this is done, we're then going to be clicking up once and we're then going to be updating the core info files. Again, this can take a little bit of time to download and extract. We're then going to be coming down to the update controller profiles. We're going to be clicking A again to download all of this. We're then going to be coming down to the update databases and we're going to be clicking A again here to update this. So these are the main core assets and files you will need for RetroArch. However, there's a couple more things we're going to have to change here as well. What we're going to be doing is coming up to the top here to the load core option again. 
we're going to be clicking twice to the right. We're going to be coming to the video option. And, and here we're going to be changing our video renderer from D3 D11 to GL. Then what we're going to be doing is coming back out of here. We're going to be clicking left twice. We're then going to be coming to the configuration file option. And we're going to be saving our current configuration. So all of these changes can be saved into RetroArch. From this point, we're simply going to be closing and relaunching RetroArch. So all of these changes will come into effect and you'll instantly see a difference. We can see all of the UI and menus visualized. And it's going to make it a lot easier to scroll around here and know exactly what's going on. So what we're going to be doing from this point is changing one or two other things. We're going to be coming to the right. We're going to be coming to the video option. We're going to be coming to scaling and we're going to be enabling this. We're then going to be coming back out of here. We're going to be coming to the inputs. And this is one thing I'd recommend changing is if you come to hotkeys, we're going to be coming to the menu toggle gamepad combo. So by default, this is going to be disabled. And this is so we can bring up the RetroArch menu with our Xbox controller. If we click A on this option right here, we will then be able to choose what menu combination you would like to use to bring up the RetroArch menu. So there's a bunch of different options here. For me, I'm going to be doing down and select. This is one that makes the most sense for me, but I recommend choosing whatever you can remember easily. You can then test it on the menu out here. You'll see a small white pop-up to say it's confirmed, and then you have this set up. We're then going to be coming back to the home menu. We're going to be clicking on the configuration file, and one more time we're going to be saving this configuration type. And now your RetroArch is fully set up and ready to go. After this, you can feel free to restart your RetroArch again, as shown before, and then all of these settings will be brought into effect. And just like that, you've just fully installed and set up RetroArch on your Xbox Series S, or your Xbox Series X. So that's all I'm going to be showing you for RetroArch in today's video. I plan to make future videos to show you exactly how to do different consoles. As this video is already pretty long, I don't want to show everything in today's video. So if there's anything specific you would like to see, including adding cheats, some different shaders, overlays, stuff like that, leave comments down below and I'll be sure to get around to them. The last thing I'm going to be showing you in today's video is how to exit dev mode on your Xbox so you can start to access all your original games. And there's one important step we're going to do here. So when you do this, you don't actually access accidentally delete RetroArch and have to install all this process again. So I'm going to be showing you that next and then that'll be the end of the video. So once you're in your dev mode, what we're going to be doing is coming to the home page right here. Underneath quick actions, you will have leave dev mode option. And if you select this open, you'll get this pop up to confirm if you want to leave dev mode. What you need to do is come up here and de-check delete side loaded apps and games. It's really important if you accidentally leave this check, you'll have to do the RetroArch step and install everything manually again. So every time you leave dev mode, be sure to uncheck this option. So when you leave dev mode, every Everything will still be installed and later if you want to enter back into dev mode all you need to do is open up the dev mode app that we installed at the start of the video restart and launch back into dev mode and all of your apps will still be there a little bit later on and it's just to double check and make sure that you can jump back and forth so you can play your normal games and then you can play your games on RetroArch without any worries of losing any content or any data and that's the best way to do it anyway guys it's as easy as that to set up and install RetroArch on your xbox series x or your xbox series s if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to drop a like subscribe if you're new check out the other videos on the channel I'm going to be leaving a link down below to my PayPal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.